So if we used n behavior, if we did the limit as n goes to infinity of what we call the p of n, what's that going to be? What, it's going to get infinitely close to 1 over, but what is the n behavior? What is it going to? It's going to 0, right? So that at least gives it a chance it could. All we know now is it could converge. All we know now is that it could converge. That's it. Does anybody have, the denominator here gets wicked big and this stays at 1, right? So you're like, oh, this is much smaller, right? But here's the thing. When n gets really, really, really big, what's the only term on the board that really matters there? N to the fourth. N to the fourth. Everything else gets totally inconsequential, right? So after a while, this thing is going to be almost indistinguishable from the harmonic series. It's going to be almost indistinguishable from the harmonic series. So if you had to lay money on this, what would you say? Diverge. It diverges. It diverges. I am actually. I love that. I love. Isn't it cool that we can now do stuff like that? Yeah. We're just like, eh, not so much. Not so much. The real. So yes, you can do that in your analysis. But if we're going to use end behavior, which is asking us to do, and the reason it's doing this is it's getting us prepared to pick complementary sequences that we can use in the ratio test. That's the whole point here. It's getting us good at looking at this and being like, oh, I want to compare this to, oh, the end behavior limit. So let's look at that end behavior limit. So could you, does anybody know, so limit as n uh, goes to, I like what you just said, and we can definitely do that. The limit as n goes to infinity of n minus 4 over this right here, like this. If we wanted to do that, what would we have to do if we wanted to do that? Maybe we can combine it with what Pinky was. It tells you something really important. If you were going to run the ratio test, you would divide by what, what other uh, sequence? 1 over the square root of n. Wait, wait, why is it? Z? <laughs> Z, I love it. Z approaches? 1. You want to go to 1? No. Go to 0. That's the problem, right? You can plug in 1, right? What is it? 1 over, do I, what do I say here? V. Nice. So theorem 9.6, convergence of absolute value implies convergence. If the absolute value of a sequence converges, if the absolute value of a series converges, then so does the series. So take a look at the example right here. Alternating sign, right? It goes plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Exciting. What this theorem tells us is if the absolute value of, if the sum, if the, abs, sorry, if the sum of the absolute value of each of those terms converges, then this converges. So this is, you know, it, it creates a little bit of a headache because you're subtracting and then adding and subtracting and adding. But what you now can do is just look at, make, think of them as all plus. If it was one plus a fourth plus a ninth, et cetera, does it converge? Yes. It does. Why? Because why? The basic game is not. No. No, not It's a p series with. It's a p series with p greater than one. Because the absolute because the sum of the absolute value of all of these terms converges because it's a p series with p greater than one. Therefore, this alternating series, what does it do? Convergence. Excellent. So, since. Since. <coughs> This converges. That's just triangle equality, right? Yes. Okay. Since that converges, then since that converges, therefore the original converges. It's kind of cool. Yay! Exciting. A fun algebra. This is so cool. I love this so much. It's so cool. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, don't even look at it. You ready? Here's what you do. You get to do a limit where you take the next term and you divide it by the current term and you see what happens. What you're trying to do is find out if as the series progresses, are, is, it doesn't have to have a, a common ratio, but is it approaching a common ratio? Look what it says. For a series, a sub n, suppose that the sequence of ratios has a limit. This, what does a sub n represent? That means the nth term in the sequence. Mm -hmm. What does a sub n plus 1 represent? The nth plus 1. The next term after n term, right? The nth plus 1 term. Yes, you say the nth plus 1 term. That is correct. If this ratio is L, if L is greater, less than 1, then it converges. 
because that's implying that it's approaching a ratio less than one. If L is greater than one, or if L is infinite, then it diverges. That means that the ratio it's approaching is greater than one. And here's the fun one. If L equals one, the test does not recall us anything. <laughs> So I can guarantee this is what's going to happen. You're going to do some pretty gnarly algebra, and it's all going to collapse really nicely, and it's going to be one, and you're going to be like, yeah, that tells me nothing. <laughs> Just get over that frustration right now. It like definitely, definitely, definitely will happen. So the basic idea is you do a limit. If it comes out to L, it might tell you something, depending on how if it's greater than one, less than one, or equal to one. Because you see the absolute values here? Because you're taking the absolute value here, it gets rid of all the alternating craziness. Um, it also means that L is always constant. So if you get one, it just tells you Nothing. It to try to do something else. <laughs> do something else. Do something else. So the ratio test tells us we have to do a certain limit. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over the absolute value of a sub n. That's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of, what is a sub n? Oh, we have it right there. It's, uh, what's, what's the numerator going to be? 1 over what? 1 over what? n plus 1 what? Exactly. Over what? 1 over n factorial. Nice. So that is the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over what? 1. Are, are you with me so far? Now, this is where you just have to be super careful about canceling everybody, right? Just be, please be careful. I can guarantee you're going to make some weird mistake when you have like a factor of like 2n plus 1 factorial. And factorial means you multiply by each step lower all the way down to 1. Exciting. Can someone tell me what this equals? This is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. If I expand this out, just to be clear about this, this is what it looks like, right? Do, do, do. What's the bottom start at? times n, times n minus 1. So do a bunch of things cancel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's left? Gone, gone. It's going to keep going, right? So you end up with limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over what? Which is what? Zero. Zero. So did we find an L? We did. Exciting. Woohoo. Exciting. So what does that tell us? It converges. Exciting. Now here's the thing. The overall methodology is not super complicated on this. The algebra can be a pain in the butt. I'm sorry. It's just how it is. What do I mean? Well, we'll do one later, but a big, 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 big common thing when you're using the ratio test is absolute values tend to be involved in the examples that you're going to be given. Be really careful with that. Uh, sorry, factorials, I mean. Be really careful with factorials. Just please be careful. You know what they mean. It's super easy to cancel them wrong and get something that makes you sad. It's, what is that? Alternating, Alternating harmonic. harmonic. It's going to converge because the series, because the sequence of absolute value of the.